QuickBooks Online 2023. Pay employees, get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. It's online sample company. If you want these two open at the same time, we suggest using the incognito window or another browser. You can open the incognito window if using Google Chrome by selecting the three dots in the browser and incognito window and then type into the search engine QuickBooks Online test drive. We're going to be using the sample company to compare and contrast the accounting view, the view Get Great Guitars company file is in, and the business view, the view that the sample company is in. If you'd like to switch back and forth between the two views, you can do so by selecting the cog up top and switch the view down below. Opening up a couple tabs to put reports in, we're going to duplicate the tab up top by right clicking on it and duplicate. Right click on the duplicated tab again to duplicate. And then we're going to go back to the tab to the middle and select the reports on the left hand side. Opening up one of the faves, that being the balance sheet report. And then we're going to, let's take a look at that on the business view, by the way. If I go to the business view, the reports are located in the business overview. And then we have the reports on the left hand side. That's where they're located here back to get great guitars let's tab to the right and then open the reports on the left hand side this time the PL profit loss the income statement in other words closing the hand boogie scrolling up to change that range from 010123 tab 123 tab run it for refreshing it and then tab it to the middle close the boogie scroll up range change again 010123 tab 123123 tab and run it to refresh it that's the setup process we do every time now we're going to be processing the payroll so i'm going to go to the first tab over here remember that payroll is something that you have the option as to whether you want to pay more to process the payroll within quickbooks or process payroll with a third party provider there's pros and cons uh in both of those formats of the payroll we were able to turn on the payroll for the free as part of the free 30-day trial so we're going to be uh, testing out the payroll within the system so if i go into the payroll we're now in the payroll center and if we're in the other view by the way the payroll is down here as well we have a similar tab in the business view now if i take a quick look at our flow chart here just to think about the process of payroll what we did is we set up the payroll and that's the first thing we got to get going because the payroll taxes could differ based on uh, the location and we have to pay more to get the payroll set up within the quickbooks online software then if we're tracking time within the system we can enter the time into the system although that's not a requirement for all payroll because you might be tracking the time outside of the system in another program or an excel spreadsheet or you might just be paying salary and then we're going to be paying the employees which is what we're going to do now which you can basically think of as like a check type of form because at the end of the day it's going to be a form decreasing the checking account however they're going to be multiple check forms depending on how many people we're paying and they're going to be some of the most complex checks in terms of journal entries because we're going to have to calculate the gross pay the withholdings which we're going to focus on just the mandatory federal tax withholdings social security medicare and uh, federal income tax although you could also have the benefits to be withheld such as a 401k plan health insurance and you could also have state obligations as well 
both require you know required obligations for state taxes the processing of the payroll as we saw when we set up could be on a weekly basis bi-weekly semi-monthly or monthly basis and then of course those withholdings that we took from the employees and the employer taxes would have to be paid and that would be the next step on the payroll liabilities and then we have to file information reporting forms uh, which would be the 941s on a quarterly basis 940s at the end of the year, W-2 at the end of the year, and W-3 at the end of the year. So now we're in this step, processing the payroll. Now note that if you were doing this through a third party provider, then they would be processing the payroll and handling the HR typically, meaning they're gonna track all the taxes, not only on a aggregate basis, but on a year to date basis, a per employee basis, and uh, a year to date versus a current paycheck basis. That's a lot of data to kind of process. And so that's why it could be beneficial to either do it within QuickBooks where you're gonna have all that information or by a third party provider, in which case you could just pull in the summary data into the system to get your financial statements correct and use the third party provider to have all the detailed information. Okay, back to QuickBooks. Let's go into the, into the, well, let's go to the overview here. Uh, we've got the overview. We, we set this up in a prior presentation and now we're just gonna go into pay my team. Now processing the payroll can be a little bit complicated in a practice problem, depending on what the date you're working in is, because it's kind of hard to work in the past and in the future with the payroll, because typically payroll is set up to be working in real time in the current time. So if you're working this problem uh, far into the future or something like that, and you want to test out the payroll, you might have to be somewhere in the range of when you're working the problem in order to, to be able to practice with the payroll. That said, we're pretty close here, so we should be okay. So we've got the balance that's going to be coming out of the checking account. Here's the balance. We got the pay period, and we're talking uh, 1 1 to 131 because we're talking a full month. We're saying that we're paying people monthly. The pay date happens to be the same day as the end of the pay period. That's not always the case. It might be for some people that you, oftentimes and actually, actually, that you might have the pay period end on the 31st and you might then have a couple days before you actually process the checks to make sure that you can get everything processed. But we have it on the same day for our practice problem here. And then down below the people were paying we had adam that we set up as a salaried employee and uh and uh, erica smith so salaried employee i think we said like fifty-five thousand a year which comes out to four thousand five eighty three let's just double check that if i pull up the trusty calculator calculator where are you it doesn't here it is okay we can say i paid fifty five thousand divided by 12 there's where that number comes from and then erica we need to put in the hours in order to process the check here which we could do in this outer field but i'm going to go into the to the check because i'm going to make some changes uh to line it up to kind of our generic practice problem so if i want to see the detail i'm going to go into the pencil here so we'll go into the pencil here's the information so adam Here's the uh, the location, the address, the pay period, and the pay date, and so on. So we have the pay at the 458333, and then the employee taxes. So these are the withholdings from the pay for the employee taxes. Now, I'm going to change some of these here. This is being generated directly from what we put in that we would have gotten from the W-4 but I'm gonna put the, my own information in here to kind of match the practice problem that we put together and match you know, our bank reconciliations. So I'll give just a quick recap on how this would work. The federal income tax is not our federal income tax as the business. We pay taxes too as the business owner, but this is the employee's federal income tax that they would pay that's gonna re be reflected on their form 1040 that we are withholding from them the federal income tax is quite complex due to the due to the progressive tax systems and all the different deductions and whatnot. That's one of the primary reasons you pay for payroll because you have to get the information from the W-4 and then go through this complex calculation 
to get the federal income tax, which is useful to have a computer to do oftentimes, although you could look it up on a table. So, but I'm gonna just type, so I'm just gonna make up the number here at 720 to match the practice problem. Now these other two down below are automatically calculated and they are usually more of a flat tax. So they're gonna be a lot easier to calculate and, and notice they're kind of hard coded in here. They won't even let me change it because if I take the uh, 4583.33, the gross times the 0.062, I believe it is. And that's where we get the 28417. That's the employee portion of social security that they're paying into. And then if I take the 4583.33 times 0.0145, that's where you get the 6648, the Medicare. And then the California tax, I'm gonna try to say that I don't want the California tax because I'm making it a generic problem. So now we have then the 720 plus the 284.17 plus 66.45. That's the total of 1,070.63 minus the total check, which is the 4583.33 minus the gross pay. So 4583.33 minus the 1,070.63 would mean the net check at this point of 3,512.70. And then we've got the employer taxes. These are the taxes that we're going to match on our side. And that's going to be the social security. So we're paying over and above. Uh, we're basically paying taxes, not on our income, but on an expense, the amount that the, we're paying the employees of that 284.17, the 66.46. It's designed or it was designed to look kind of like a retirement kind of setup, right? They put money in and we kind of like match it down below. Now, normally you would have another one that we turned off, which was the FUTA, Federal Unemployment Tax Act. And, but it's usually fairly small and it has a fairly low cap. So we took that out and that would be the federal taxes. And that, that one is only on the employer side, not something that's being taken out of the uh, employee wages and then again if you had any state taxes you could see the california income tax here if that was applicable but we're going to make it generic and then if you had any uh non-required withholdings the uh voluntary withholdings they like benefits they would be up in here as well so that's going to be the the general idea what's this going to do when we actually record it it's going to record a paycheck the paycheck is going to, to decrease cash by what we calculated here, the 3,512.70. And then it's going to increase an expense of the 4,583.33 because this is what they actually earned, even though they're only going to get the check for that 3,512. And then the difference is going to have to go to a payable. So we're going to have a, a payable for everything that was withheld, this 1,070.63 that we're gonna have to pay to the government because that's why we, we took it from the employees or never gave it to them, even though in theory they earned it. And then we've got the social security, which is also gonna increase another expense account, which might be payroll tax expense or combined into the same payroll expense. And the other side of that is also gonna to go to a liability so that we have to pay our portion of taxes on the employee wages. This is the transaction that would happen on an employee by employee basis. And we can think about the same transaction happening in aggregate as if all employees were like one employee filing or processing payroll for one time frame. So let's save this one. I think this one looks good. I'm going to say, okay, let's save that. Now I'm going to change Erica's rate here. So you might have 16 on it. I think I changed it. So I'm going to close it to show you how to do that. I'm gonna to go to the employees on the left-hand side. We're gonna choose Erica. Let's close up the hand boogie and I'm looking for the rate. So if I scroll down, we're looking, there it is. You might have 16 there. If you're following along, I'm gonna edit it and I'm gonna change it to, I think we had 15 for the practice problem. So let's change it to 15. I lowered it. She's gonna be pissed. I'm sorry, that's what my data, that's what my practice problem says. My supervisor, made me lower it anyways we're going to go back in to the payroll then back to the overview and let's close it up and go back to the pay of the team good and then we're going to put the pencil pencil for erica 
So Erica, I'm gonna say that she worked for the month 160 hours. And notice I'm just imagining we got that from some other location like an Excel worksheet or something like that, or another program that we're tracking time in. And then in the federal income tax, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna change the federal tax to 360, which is quite high, but that's what I have on the practice problem. We can see that the other rates here are more of a flat tax. So we can take the 2400 times 0.062. That's where they're getting 148.80. And if we take the 2400 times 0.0145, that's where they're getting the 3480. Those are more of a flat tax system, although there are caps on it and some tricky stuff, which is makes it useful to have the software to help us. That comes out to 582. So I think that looks good. So if I was to add this up, we got 360 plus 148.8 plus 34.8. That's what we're gonna withhold minus the 2,400 or 2,400 minus this means that she would get a net check of that. So what would the journal entry be for this employee so far? It would be the expense would be recorded at the 2,400. The other side would be the net check decrease in the checking account for the 543.60 and then some kind of liability here for what we basically took from the employee or never gave them in the first place, but which they earned in theory. And then we have our employer taxes, which are going to be matching, in essence, the Social Security and Medicare, and we didn't add the FUTA taxes. So this would be another journal entry, or you could think of it as another journal entry, which would be increase in the payroll liabilities, the other side going to payroll taxes expense. Notice that this is the only part that really should be in a payroll tax expense category, even though you might think of these as payroll taxes, and we typically do as an employee, but these are the employee's payroll taxes, and they earned 2,400. And then in theory, they paid their own payroll taxes, even though we, the employer, are the ones forced to withhold it from them and pay it on their behalf. Whereas these payroll taxes are payroll taxes that we are paying over and above the employee's wages. So it's a little bit tricky to understand that, but once you get that, it makes sense, I hope. And so there's gonna be that. And now, so I'm gonna say, okay, let's save this one. I'm gonna say, okay, and that's what we have. Here's our summary. I think we need to adjust Adams again. I think they didn't, I'm gonna go back into Adam and it was employees. We had, this should be at the 720 now cause I readjusted it again and this should be zero. So there's, there it is. So, so now we're back to where it should be. This side looks good. Okay, I'm gonna say, okay. So we got our preview down below and then we've got save for later. So let's go to the preview button that gives us another summary. So we've got uh, view and submit. We've got the total payroll. Here's the net pay, uh, the employee and employer for a summary up top. And then we've got the employee by employee breakdown, which is nice here because they actually give you the total pay and uh, the employee taxes and the net pay. So this is the total pay minus what was taken out for the employee taxes and then the net pay. So they give you the summary here. I kind of feel like they should give us this summary on the prior screen. But anyways, you can go back here. We can go to the preview payroll details. Let's go ahead and do that. So it gives us another little kind of report format. So you've got the pay, you've got the deductions, you've got the employee pay taxes and the employer pay taxes on an employee by employee basis, and then the total. So remember when we talked about the journal entries, the accounts that were impacted, you can think of it on an employee by employee basis, but you can also think about it in terms of what's the total impact on the financial statements as if all your employees were basically like one employee. If you were working with a third party provider, then you might have them process the payroll break their information out on an employee by employee basis, have them give the employees the stuff that's necessary on a check by check basis, as well as a year to date basis. And you're entering, you're mainly concerned in that case with making your financial statements correct and being able to enter the data in such a way that you can, that you can uh, do the bank reconciliations, but it would just be some, you can like kind of summarize it uh, in that case, which takes far less data 
uh, than, than to break out all the data necessary for an employee by employee basis by just thinking of them kind of as if they were one employee. And what's the impact on the financials? All right. So then we've got the submit or save for later. I'm going to go ahead and submit the payroll. By the way, when I made the change before, I should have saved it for later. And then I wouldn't have had to go back in and change Adam's information here. So let's go ahead and submit the payroll. And so now we've got this item. We got a survey. I'm not going to do the survey. No survey right now and not using direct deposit. So if you have direct deposit, then you can set up the direct deposit. Otherwise, we're going to be entering the check numbers into the system. I'm going to let it autofill the check numbers. So autofill the check numbers, enter a start check number greater than zero. I'll leave that be for now. Let's take a look at the pay stubs. Now, remember from an HR perspective, we generally have to give the employees a pay stub in some way, shape or form, because we have to tell them not only that they got a net check, but what we took out of their check. So this is, you know, so, so if you have an electronic transfer, you'd still need to give them this information and notice what we have here. We've got the current and the year to date. So this is the, the salary current and year to date. They're the same right now. Obviously they would be different if it wasn't the first pay period. Social security, uh, federal income tax, Medicare taken out. They've got the summary current year to date on the right. And we have that for both of our employees. So that looks good. I'm gonna close that back up and let's go ahead and finish this out. So I'll say finish payroll and then let's make sure taxes got paid on time. Most small businesses pay taxes every month. So set up taxes now, and I'm gonna say that we'll do it later. I'll do it later for the practice problem purposes. Obviously that when you're gonna have to pay the taxes will be partially in dependent on the company themselves. And you might have uh, different requirements for when or how often or how far after the payroll you have to actually be paying the, the taxes. So let's take a look at that now as we see the impacts. A lot of the times, the first thing I like to look at is the actual check register. So we can find that in the accounting and then the chart of accounts. And if you're in the business view, by the way, it would be the chart of accounts is in the, the bookkeeping and then the chart of accounts under the manage. And then in the chart of accounts, I'm going to select the check register to see where those checks that were uh, created. Here are the two paychecks that were created. Now it didn't apply the check number for whatever reason. I tried to autofill the check number in there. So I'm going to go in and add the check number if I can. Let's try to edit. Let's try to edit Adams first. I'm going to go into Adam and then let's edit and i'm going to try to give adam a check number here and i'm going to call it uh 101012 because when i do the bank reconciliations i'm going to have a check number on it and so i'd like to tie that out it's not a big deal but i'd like to do that if i could so i'm going to save that and then i'm going to go back into the hamburger up top and we're going to go back into the accounting on the left hand side the chart of accounts again I'm going to go into the register and just try to add the other check number to Erica. Erica, edit that one. And this is going to be, I'm going to say 1013. All right. So not a big deal if you don't have that, but it'll make it a little bit easier to tie out on the bank reconciliation. So if I go back down into the accounting and we go into the chart of accounts and open up the cash there they are okay then let's take a look at the impact on the financial statements if i go to the balance sheet we're going to say what's going to happen from this well obviously the checking account went down so cash is going to go down we generated however many checks we have employees when we processed them there's our two checks obviously these amounts are the net check they're not the full uh, payroll that was received in terms of gross pay on the income statement if i go to the income statement and refresh it, run it to refresh it. Then we have down here the wages. And if you don't like wages, you can change the, the, the name of the account possibly to like payroll or, or whatever you want to call it. But we've got the uh, 698333. Those are the gross wages that were that, that were earned before we took out the, the taxes from them, the withholdings. 
And so there is that. And then we also had our taxes as the employer that we had to pay over and above the payroll taxes. This is our kind of matching portion for the way the payroll taxes are set up, Social Security and Medicare. And we're gonna have a liability back to the balance sheet. We have a liability down here for those taxes. So we got them down here. Now they grouped them in these two categories here. And you could kind of go in and try to adjust the categories if you want to group your categories differently. But let's first go into here. Federal taxes that were withheld. This is what this is what we, we withheld. And the portion that we owe for the employer taxes that we have to then pay at some future point after the payroll is processed to the government. So that's the general that's the general idea with the payroll. Now remember if you had a third party payroll provider doing the taxes and then you would want to enter the information into the system just possibly like one lump sum here given their payroll report so your financial statements are correct you can even try to stay in a cash based system and try to wait till everything clears the bank be on a cash based system and record uh, record the the payroll taxes and liabilities as expenses when you actually pay them and then make a period end adjustment for uh, financial reporting at the end of the month or the end of the year, possibly with the help of the CPA firm and your payroll provider periodically. If you, tr if you wanted to be a bookkeeper trying to automate everything on a cash based system, possibly with the bank feeds as much as possible and then making a periodic adjustment. You don't have that option if you're processing payroll within QuickBooks because you need all this added data, all this information is necessary in order to generate the information that's needed from an HR perspective, as well as processing the checks, as well as creating the financial statements at the end of uh, the quarter and the year. Let's go to the tab to the right, right click and duplicate that tab. And then just note that we also have other payroll reports that are gonna be generated now that we have payroll turned on, that's under the reports on the left hand side. And we can scroll down to the payroll reports payroll scroll down so here's our employee reports and then we have all these payroll reports down below there's a plethora of payroll uh, reports let's look at the payroll detail report so open up the payroll detail i've closed up the hamburger so we've got the date range for i, I just put the whole year uh, january through december 2023 obviously we only have one uh, payroll period for the first month of operations we've got our two employees notice that we can see this in terms of an employee by employee breakout and we can also see it in terms of the gross amount so this is similar to a report that you might get from like a third-party payroll provider if you had this done by a third-party provider that you can you can then use again to give your summary information for the financial reporting on either a paycheck by paycheck basis or a month end quarter end or a year end basis as you need as you need to be putting that into uh, the system for whatever your needs may be now obviously when you're processing payroll within the quickbooks system you can see all the added data that's going to accumulate up as we're tracking the information necessary for the processing of payroll for issuing the stubs for filling out uh, the the reports and at the end of the year uh, you want to get everything entered as best you can for the payroll and try to not have a system where you're where you have errors when you're doing the data input you'd rather not tinker around with something until you get it right with payroll but rather get it right the first time because oftentimes if something's not set up right it's going to come to light like at the end of the year when you're really busy doing everything else and that's uh, kind of an issue with payroll sometimes so at the end of the year of course you're going to have to process all of the, the last 941 the 940 the w2s and the w3 and this information will be necessary or this is the type type of information used by quickbooks to help to populate those forms and if you were in an audit or something like that you would expect the payroll forms here to tie out to what's reflected on the financial statements to be able to tie out to what's reflected on the reporting forms, the 941s, the 940s, and the W-2 forms. So that's the general idea. Let's go back and just check out our trial balance now. I'm gonna open up 
and then go back to our reports and then let's just type in our trial balance and check our numbers trial balance and then we'll run that from 010123 tap 123123 and run it and now we've got the balance sheet on top of the income statement if your numbers tie out to what we have that's great if not try expanding the range and see if it's a if it's a date issue and then you can go in and change the date note that if you need to change a payroll check then usually you have to actually delete the payroll and then process again to make it uh, record properly. You can't just adjust like a payroll check typically, except the check number that we did. But normally if you have to change the numbers on the check, then you, ha you typically have to delete it and process it again. So beware once again, payroll, one of those things you don't want to tinker with to get it right. You want to get it right the first time, measure twice, cut once. That's the, that's the adage you'd like to be going with.